Okay, gang. We're going to finish up section 2.5. I got one last example on this one. We're going to do the whole thing together, including finding the inverse. So, my problem says 2 y, excuse me, 2x plus y plus 2z is equal to 10. x plus 4y minus z equals 8. 3x minus 2y plus z is equal to 4. Okay, on the left-hand side, I'm going to come up with the inverse. So, we know we're going to have 2, 1, 2, 1, 4, negative 1, 3, negative 2, 1. And then we're going to put the identity over here. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, we want to get a 1 here. So normally I multiply by 1 half, but if you'll notice, there's a 1 below it. You can change rows on this. So if I put the second row first, which row 1, we're going to switch with row 2. So the top row becomes 1, 4, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. And the second row is 2, 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, 1. So all I did was switch rows. By switching rows, instead of multiplying through by 1 half, I've saved the work with some fractions. So you notice I don't have any fractions, at least not yet. That becomes my pivot. Now I want to get rid of the, in the second row, I need a zero. Where the two is, so I'm going to take negative two times row one plus row two. Top row stays the same. Negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. We knew that. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Plus 0 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 0 is 0. On the bottom row, <clears throat> we're going to multiply by negative 3 times row 1, add it to row 3. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus positive 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 and negative 2 is negative 14. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 0 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Yeah, here comes the fractions. Now I want to get a 1 where the negative 7 is. Top row stays the same. 1, 4, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. To get a 1 here, we're going to take negative 1 7th times row 2. So negative 1 7th times 0 is 0. Negative 1 7th times negative 7 is 1. That's my new pivot. Negative 1 7th times 4 is negative 4 7ths. Negative 1 7th times 1 is negative 1 7th. Negative 1 7th times 2, that becomes positive 2 7 and that times 0 is 0. You're starting to, I'm sure you're developing an appreciation of zeros. When you have zeros, it makes your work a lot better. Bottom row stays the same. Now that you got a 1 in the second column, 
we want to get a zero up on top where the 4 is. So we're going to take negative 4 times row 2, add it to row 1. So negative 4 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is still 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, plus positive 4 is 0. Now it's going to get a little tougher. Now we've got to take negative 4 times negative 4 is 7. I've got some scrap paper here. I'm going to write it down here. Negative 4 times negative 4 four sevenths. A lot of times I'll just take a, an extra piece of paper and I'll slide it right here. Okay, times negative four sevenths and I have to add that to negative one. So that becomes the negatives drop out that 16 over 7. Think of this as negative 7 over 7. You got to have a common denominator. That's going to give you 9 over 7. And that's what I'm going to put right here. Then I've got to take negative 4 times that's a negative 1 up on top. I don't know why. Okay, so now I'm going to take negative 4 times negative 1, so that's 4 sevenths plus 0 is 4 sevenths. Now I have to take negative 4 times 2 sevenths, so I'm going to put it down here, negative 4 Times two sevenths, and I got to add to one. So that's negative eight over seven. One, you could write seven over seven. Negative one seventh. Then zero and zero is still zero. Second row stays the same, so I got zero, one, negative four sevenths. Negative one seventh, two over seven, and zero. And on the bottom row, we're going to multiply by fourteen and add. So fourteen times row two plus row three. Turn the scrap paper around in case I need it. Fourteen times zero is zero plus zero is zero. 14 times 1 is 14. 14 plus negative 14 is 0. 14 times negative 4 sevenths plus 4. That's what we're doing right here. Now, 14 and 7. 7 goes into 14, so you could cancel those out, so that becomes 2. 2 times Negative 4 is negative 8, plus 4 is going to be negative 4. Right there. 14 times negative 1 seventh. Again, the 7 goes in 14 twice. That's going to be negative 2. So some things you can kind of do in your head. 14 times 2 sevenths. I'll write this one down. Plus the number on the bottom is negative 3. So those cancel gets 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus negative 3 is 1. That's nice. And then here 0 and 1 is going to be 1. Okay, moving on. Next step is I got to get a 1 with a negative 4. As you can see, these two columns are done. I got to get 1s on the diagonal, so that's the next one. So the top row stays the same. Second row stays the same. And to get a 1 here, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's negative 1 fourth times row 3. So negative one fourth times zero is zero. Negative one fourth times zero is zero. Negative one fourth times negative four is one. Negative one fourth times negative two. The negatives drop out. That's two over four, so that'll be a half. Negative one fourth times one is negative one fourth. 
negative one fourth times one is negative one fourth. Okay. Okay, so here's uh, this should be the last step on getting the inverse. Now the bottom row is done, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in first. I've got to get a zero here in the second row, so I'm going to multiply four sevenths times row three, add it to row two. So four seven times zero zero plus zero is zero. Four seven times zero zero plus one is one. Four seven times one is four sevenths plus negative four sevenths is zero. Now it gets tougher. I got to take four sevenths times one half. and add that to the number right above it. So it's negative one seventh. Two goes down there once, two goes up here once or twice. So two times two is two. I got two over seven plus negative one seventh. It's gonna be one seventh. Go to the next one. Now I've got to take four sevenths times negative one-fourth plus the number above it is two-sevenths. The fours drop out, that becomes negative one-seventh plus two-sevenths. It's going to be one-seventh. Then on the last one, I've got to take four-sevenths Times negative one fourth. I'm gonna add that number above, which is zero. The fours drop out. That's negative one seventh plus zero is negative one seventh. There you go. Now we go to the top row. So on the top row, I'm going to have to multiply by negative 9 sevenths row 3 plus row 1. So basically you got 0 plus 1 is still 1, and 0 plus 0 is still 0. And when you take negative 9 sevenths times 1, that's negative 9 sevenths plus the positive 9 sevenths is 0. Those three kind of fall into place. Now I have to take negative 9 sevenths times 1 half plus the 4 sevenths on top. So that's going to be negative 9 over 14. I got 4 over 7. We're going to have to common denominator, so that's going to be 14. To get a 14, you multiply by 2, so 2 times 4 is 8. So you got negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1 over 14. And that goes right here. Now we go to the next one. We got to take the negative 9 sevenths times negative 1 fourth and add that to negative 1 seventh. The negatives drop out, that's going to be 9 over 28 plus, common denominator, I need to make that a 28, so I'll multiply by 4, so that becomes negative 4 on top. 9 plus negative 4 is 5 over 28, and it goes right here. Okay, and the last one, we're going to take... We're going to take negative 9 sevenths 
from here times negative one-fourth and add it to zero. So that becomes uh, positive 9 over 28 plus 0 is 9 over 28. Okay, so now what that tells us, our inverse, negative 1 over 14, 5 over 28, 9 over 28. One seventh, one seventh, negative one seventh, one half, negative one fourth, negative one fourth. Now we've done the hard part, we found the inverse. So let's go back to the top. There we go. So the inverse says that basically um, you start out, you got A times X equals B. And if you want to find out what X is, you're going to take the inverse times B. So X, Y, Z will be equal to the inverse, which I just found down there. And I'm going to copy it. You may not be able to see it just right, but negative 1 14th. It's kind of a pain copying all this stuff, but it's what you have to do. It helps to be neat. I really try to be neat. Uh, unfortunately, my writing is not the best in the world. I think most math people are like that. Okay, now that you got the inverse, sorry about that, now you're going to put in the B matrix, which are these numbers up here. 10, 8, and 4. So again, you're going to take rows times the column. So I see negative 1 14th, this is x, will be equal to negative 1 14th times 10, plus 5 over 28 times 8, plus... 9 over 28 times 4. This is going to be negative 10 over 14. This is going to be 40 over 28. And this is going to be 36 over 28. That 10 over 14 you could think of as being negative 20 over 28 to get a common denominator. Now they're all over 28. So you got negative 20 plus 40 is 20. 20 plus 36 is 56. And that's equal to 2. So x is equal to 2. I'm going to run out of space here again. So to find y, going back up here, I'm going to take 1 7th times 10 plus 1 7th times 8 plus negative 1 7th times 4. That's 7 tenths. I'm sorry, I set it backwards. 10 over 7 plus 8 over 7 minus 4 over 7. So 10 plus 8 is 
18. 18 minus 4 is 14 over 7. Y is equal to 2. So X was 2, Y is 2. And then to find Z, going back up here, I'm going to take 1 half times 10 plus negative 1 fourth times 8 plus negative 1 fourth times 4. Half of 10 is 5. 1 fourth of 8 is 2, so I got negative 2. 1 fourth of 4 is 1, so I'm going to subtract 1. So I got 3, 3 minus 1, 2. I got Z is equal to 2. They're all 2. So the answer, the order triple, would be 2, 2, and 2. That's a lot of work. I understand that. But that's the inverse method with the 3 by 3. And the advantage of a 3 by 3 is you can, or I'm sorry, the advantage of this method of finding the inverse is you can use the same method for a 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, no matter how big it gets, I can use the same method. The hard part's finding the inverse, though, and going through all the steps to do it. Now, if you watch the other videos on my TI-83 Plus series, I showed you how to find the inverse using the calculator. On bigger problems, that's what they do. Uh, they have all this programmed into computers, and, you know, uh, with the TI-83s now, you can do a lot of stuff on it, but that's what people do. Okay, I'm going to wrap that up. That finishes up 2-5, and... Um, now we're starting to look forward to the test. Okay.